Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I wanted to introduce you to a new sample I've created and what's different about this one is it's using the new Microsoft Aspire framework. So Aspire is a tool from Microsoft that lets you automatically set up your dependencies like your databases, your, uh, if you're using messaging, obviously mass transit, it'll set up your brokers for you. And it does a lot of the plumbing to make it so you don't have to mess with like a Docker Compose or anything like that. So I'll put a link to the base Aspire page in the description so you can definitely check that out. But I wanna jump right into the sample. So the sample with the Aspire application, it adds two new projects to your solution. You get this app host project, which is where you configure all of your dependencies, your applications, any databases you might need. And then it also creates a service defaults project, which is kind of where it puts all the plumbing so your applications know how to connect up to things. Now, all of your actual services have to depend upon that service defaults project because that's what's injecting some of the components that you need. So you can see here, uh, I'm using Mass Transit with this, so I'm gonna create a Postgres database. I'm gonna go ahead and use the SQL transport to start. And I'm gonna set like a username and password. I'm gonna set up some health checks. I'm gonna go ahead and enable Postgres admin so I can take a peek at the data. And then I'm gonna set up a database called sample. And that's where I'm gonna put this samples data. Now there's two application services that I have here. One is the back end and one is the API. And the back end is gonna process orders and the front end is gonna let us submit orders through an API for processing. Um, and that's all you have really in the Aspire side is you're telling it your things. In this case, I'm telling it that I wanna access the back end database because, well, I need a database. And I'm also gonna do a wait for on Postgres, which is just another extension that lets me wait for those uh, Postgres services to be available before I actually start up. And a lot of this is taken from other samples on the internet of, that people have built with Aspire. Now, let's start with the API project. When I look at the program CS, you can see I'm setting it up just like a regular web application. I'm calling add service defaults, which is that extension method generated by the Aspire framework. Uh, and then I'm just calling gets connection string on sample. Now, if you look back in here, I created the backend database called sample and I put with reference for my project. What that's gonna do is that's gonna give me that connection string and that connection string is gonna come in using that name I specify. So it makes it super easy. I can go in and I can add the SQL transport options. Now with the latest pre-release, it actually works. I think it also works with A23. You can just set the connection string and it's gonna do everything else it needs to do. So you don't have to specify any of the properties. It's gonna use the sensible defaults for role and scheme and just put that in there. Um, in this case, the API is just publishing. So I'm gonna set up the Postgres database and I'm just gonna add some filters. And I'll cover those filters when I talk about why this sample is being built. But I wanted to do it with Aspire because everybody's talking about it and I wanted to you know, make sure the master has it work with it. In this case, I have a simple map post where I'm just getting in an order model and I'm calling publish endpoint publish to get that process order, which is just a very simple order ID customer number because we don't need all the details for this sample. You can do whatever you want there. The back end is a little different um, because we're gonna actually have our consumer in there. Um, but you can see um, the back end gets the same connection string and gets the options. But in this case, I've chosen to have the back end actually provision the schema and all of the infrastructure required, you know, do the migrations to set up Postgres. Um, you could do it either way. You could put it in both of them, but then they're going to fight over each other. So I just decided to put it in one of these services and let this happen. Theoretically, I could put a with reference on the back end and make sure the back end is started first. But again, we're just bouncing stuff around. Um, here I'm gonna have my process order consumer. And in this case, I'm doing some things with the SQL transport configurator. I'm setting a longer than usual lock duration because it might take a while to process an order. And I'm setting the receive mode to partitioned ordered. Now the SQL transport has a very kind of unique feature as far as being able to do partitioned ordered processing of messages. And it does this in a way that prevents like one customer from hogging all of the processing power. So let's say a customer had submitted a thousand messages to process orders, and then another customer comes in and wants their order processed. Well, with a traditional queue, you're gonna grind through a thousand messages before you ever get to that smaller customer's order. With the SQL transport set up for partitioning, I can actually prevent that and say process one message at a time per customer, and then 
if other customer messages come in, they will be picked up and processed at the same time. So it doesn't have to wait for all of those others. So that prevents like the noisy neighbor problems or just competition on the queue for space and prevents you from having to set up separate infrastructure for all your customers because the partitioning will make sure that you can spread that out and handle all of the customers. So I set up the same filters here. This filter is just a middleware filter and it looks to see if there's a property called customer number on the message. And if there is one, it sets the partition key to that um, customer number. And that partition key is then used by the SQL transport to handle the partitioning. So kind of a neat little feature there. Um, we'll go back here. Uh, in this case, we're gonna configure endpoints because we've set up that process order consumer. That process order consumer doesn't do a whole lot. It just logs that it's processing an order for a customer. And, and lets it go at that. So I'm gonna go ahead and run the app host down here in the window. So when you're running a, an Aspire application, you run the actual application host. So I'm gonna run app host.sample, and that's gonna do its building, everything the dependencies are gonna build, and it's gonna start up. And what it's gonna launch is it's gonna launch this dashboard. Now this is probably the coolest part of Aspire. You can actually see everything that's running. I could see that I've added P Postgres admin. I can actually go to that site and CPG admin, it's gonna just show up. If it eventually loads, it takes it a while. Um, and I can actually just go to my Swagger page here to submark processing an order. So for instance, I can come in here, I can say try it out. And let's say my customer number is customer01, and I execute this, I can see that my post came back. If I go into here, I can then go look at the backend's logs, and I can see that I processed that order for customer1. If I go in here and let's just, you know, let's throw a bunch more of these out there. Let's do customer two, let's do customer three. Let's go back and do another one for customer one. I can then go look at the logs and see that those are being processed and that's all done through the SQL transport, which is using that Postgres database. Um, this probably never loaded, but there it is. There's Postgres admin. I can go in and see that for the servers, it's set up the local server. I can go into databases, I can see that sample database. I go look at schemas, I can see that the transport schema is set up and all of the SQL transports tables and everything were created the way Postgres expects them to, you know. Snake or camel or camel case underscore or lowercase underscore, whatever. It's just how, how that naming convention works. With SQL Server, it would look different. It would have Pascal case because everybody likes Pascal case in SQL Server. It's whatever they want. So Postgres has its I guess idioms and so does SQL Server. Um, but yeah, so that's the sample. I'm gonna put this up on GitHub. Link will be in the description. It'll kind of get you started if you're looking to use Aspire and Mass Transit together. You can also do it with RabbitMQ. I'll do another video and kind of update the sample to have a version that also uses RabbitMQ. So you can do use like RabbitMQ and your database separately and not do that. But with Postgres and the SQL Transport or SQL Server and the SQL Transport, there's really no need to have that separate broker, especially if you're just doing a low volume of message processing and just want that durable asynchronous processing, that queue style of processing in your application without all the overhead of running a separate broker and managing that. So hopefully you found this video useful. Thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you next time.